New at 5.30 tonight, a 17 new special report. Rehabilitation, that's a word that is often associated with other words like drugs, alcohol, or gambling. But what about porn? In a special report tonight, 17's Nate Kelly investigates an organization right here in Bakersfield that helps those affected by the adult film industry. Nate? About 85% of the world's adult film content is produced just south of here in the San Fernando Valley. Tonight, we focus on a Bakersfield woman named Shelley Lubin, a former porn star who has devoted her life to bringing members of the adult film industry back from the brink. Here we are, an hour and 15 minutes north from the porn capital of the entire world. Bakersfield has become a refuge for former porn stars struggling to return to a normal life. It was like I had somebody who was like-minded, who had been through the same abuse, the same trauma that I had been through. It's all about learning to live a different way, learning to think a different way, getting a normal job, learning how to handle your money, how to function, just day-to-day -day life. April Garris and Ginny Case are both former porn stars. They've left the industry and are getting their lives back on track, thanks to former porn star Shelley Lubin. The cumulative characteristics of a porn star's background, what, it, what really is in the background of a woman who would choose to do pornography. The classic porn star background, or CPSB, is Lubin's explanation of why women enter the porn industry. And that would entail sexual abuse, um, parental neglect that's always at the top, um, sometimes loss of a loved one. There's always some kind of history of trauma. She knows it because she's lived it. I just remember that I was full of rage from my father and mother kicking me out on the street, and that rage fueled my career in the sex work. I was out to get revenge to every man who'd ever hurt me. I hated men and my father, and every man like him would pay. Lubin's childhood was filled with neglect, alcohol, and a desperate search for love in all the wrong places. Sex meant love to me because I realized that if I gave the boys sexual favors, they would say the words I so wanted to hear from my own dad. They would say, I love you. You're so pretty. Um, oh, there's no girl like you. And I just, I just needed that love. Lubin's search for acceptance landed her in the sex industry as Roxy. She says the industry has a system to pick up new girls. And they're pampered or tell how pretty they are. And then there's veteran porn stars who help groom them. Girl, you're going to be so hot. I'll show you. You know, porn stars get kickbacks from porn producers to bring in New meat. Lubin did about 30 films in the porn industry. By the end, she was addicted to drugs and alcohol and had herpes, a non-curable, sexually transmitted disease. I cried out every single day, eight years in the sex industry. God, where are you? I knew you as a little girl. I, I loved Jesus when I was a little girl. I, I, how, could God, how could a loving God let this happen to me? More than 100 porn stars have died from AIDS. More than 36 have died from disease, murder, suicide, and drugs since 2007. I hear about women who die, and I'm like, that should be me. Lubin, with the help of her husband Garrett, got out before it was too late. She went to rehab, attended therapy, and became a devout Christian. She's now an ordained chaplain and founded the Pink Cross Foundation. It's a nonprofit organization that rehabilitates porn stars and fights for safe and healthy work conditions in the adult film industry. 85% of the world's adult content is produced right here in the San Fernando Valley. But Lubin says the industry doesn't follow the rules. Under Cal OSHA law, all adult actors must use protection to prevent the spread of bodily fluids. In the porn industry, it's no condoms allowed. Lubin says the porn industry has dodged the laws by shooting in secret locations around California. But in 2009, the Los Angeles County Department of Public Health shut down the Adult Industry Medical Health Care Foundation for not meeting appropriate standards for health care. Lubin says it's a small victory, but it doesn't stop porn from being produced. The AIDS Healthcare Foundation, Lubin, and other former porn stars have been lobbying to public health officials to regulate every porn production in California. Either you force this industry to comply to workplace laws just like any other workplace has to in California, or you shut it down. But this is only one side of the fight. The second half of the battle is waged at home. My heart is really speak to parents who are ignorant right now, and they're letting their kid on the internet all day long, quietly in their bedroom, and um, these kids are online looking at porn. 
SafeFamilies.org reports the average child begins viewing adult material at age 11, and the easiest way is online. There are currently more than 400 million porn sites on the internet, and the main audience is children. The largest group for viewing online pornography is ages 12 to 17. Where are the parents? Lubin says the industry is trying to cater to young people to get them addicted early, but Pink Cross is there for those on the other end of the computer screen as well. Porn was taking over. It was a full-blown addiction. Roger Nickham is a recovering porn addict. He says technology plays a key role in marketing adult content to young children. The pornographers are going to where the, the children are, online, cell phones, what have you, and they're giving away this virtual drug for free, unbeknownst to the parents and authorities. So it's a, it's a serious problem. Now, the Pink Cross Foundation continues to expand as they help porn stars, addicts, and the health and safety of the industry. Lubin says she won't quit until the porn industry follows the law or is illegalized. Live in the studio, Nate Kelly, 17 News.